Hello, welcome back to Learn Economy. Today we are going to discuss the concept of investment function. Let's get started for the same. Before learning what is investment function, it is important to understand the idea of investment. Investment is something that involves the process of putting your money into some productive activities to make money. So this is the use of money in the present. Money to get future satisfaction or to get more money in future. To get more, to get future, in, to get in future more money. And having said so, we can see that the investment can be done in various forms. For example, you can go for an investment by purchasing a house. You can go for an investment by purchasing a land. You can invest your money in the share market. You can invest your money in gold. So there can be various, various avenues available to you and open in front of you where you can go for investment to get more money in future. And coming to investment, there have been various factors which would influence the investment. And whether it is investment by firms or investment by individuals, there exist several factors that influence the investment. And one of the prominent factors here would be interest rate. Then the growth of the economy would also see whether you have money with you, whether you are having an optimistic mentality, etc. So if you have optimistic mentality, you will invest and otherwise not. Confidence. You, if you expect a loss in future, you will not invest and vice versa. Inflation. The sustained increase in price level also see whether you should invest now or not now productivity of capital the prospective returns from capital that too will be influencing your investment the income that you have with you whether you are having a lesser income or more income that too would influence your investment if you have more income you will be going for more investment so that is uh, usually what we consider and vice versa so since our main topic of discussion is investment function, I am not going into the details of the way in which different factors would be affecting the investment. If you want, uh, I'll be you, doing a separate video on this uh, by explaining the different factors and the way in which this would be influencing the investment. By considering these things, uh, some introduction regarding investment, now it is time to consider investment function investment function is something that could be explained only by considering what is called the actual investment and the factors influencing investment because here we are considering a relationship between the investment and factors affecting investment so this relation between the actual investment and the factors affecting investment this the relation is called the investment function. So it's a functional relationship that you can have between investment and factors of investment. Investment is something that is a function of factors. So this is called the investment function. And whenever we say investment function, we give more importance to two of the factors. One thing is the interest rate in the economy and the other one is the income. And we usually know that whenever there is a fall in the interest rate, whenever interest rate in the economy falls, this will make people to go for more loans from banks. This will make even firms to take more loans from banks as a result of the lesser interest rate in the economy. And this would promote investment. So investment is something that has got an in, in, uh, that has got an uh, that has got some kind of connection with interest rate and this is how the connection appear now what about income whenever you have more income you will be going for more investment so here it is a direct connection 
both would increase at the same time and both would decrease at the same time. Again, you have to consider your income and interest rate as independent variables whenever you consider investment. Investment is something that depends on your income and interest rate. Okay, so moving to the investment function, uh, even though interest rate is a part of in, uh, investment and income is a, a part of investment, we are discussing investment function by considering the income and let's see how it goes. So in this case, we are explaining by considering investment as a function of income. Let's consider it and see more. So this is what makes the investment to have two divisions. The first thing is induced investment and the second thing is autonomous investment. Induced investment is something that you consider as dependent on income. So you can completely say that it is a function of your income. And here it is considered to be income elastic. That means whenever your income rises, I told you that there is a positive relationship between investment and income. So your investment too will be increasing. And vice versa, whenever your income falls, this will induce you to go for lesser investment. Investment would also be coming down as a result of falling income. So your investment, the income, uh, the uh, part of income that you go for investment, that, that is what is considered here. So your income is something influencing your investment or on the other uh, on the uh, or by using some other words you can say that your investment is induced by your income induced investment means investment is induced by income and this is what you can see in the picture you are mentioning income along the x-axis and investment along the uh, y-axis and an increase in income from y to y1 has increased investment from m to m1 so that means by joining these two points you will be getting a line which would be your investment line or investment curve ii this is the induced investment function because this is this increase this change in investment is something that has caused uh, as a result of change in income and whenever income changes from y to y1 whenever income increase from y to y1 your investment has also increased from m to m1 so that means this is induced by change in income having said about induced investment let's consider the other type of investment which is called as the autonomous investment earlier we could see that Whenever your income changes, your investment too would be changing. But in the case of autonomous investment, this will not happen. Even if your income changes, it will not have any effect on your investment here. So that is why you consider that as, as autonomous in, uh, investment as income inelastic. Earlier, it was income elastic, but now it is income inelastic. Why? Even if your income is zero, even if your income is zero, you will invest okay and even if your income rises that will not have any effect on your investment your investment will remain constant it is a non it is non zero and constant okay so it will remain the same that is what uh, we mean by constant it will remain the same okay so whenever you measure your income along the x-axis and investment along the y-axis, you could see that at zero level of your income, your investment is this much. Again, at y level of your income, your investment is this much. At, at uh, whenever your income is, whenever your income increase to y1 from y, again your investment is only this much. Investment remains the same. That is what we could see here. And since uh, the investment is not induced, we could see that this is made by the government. Autonomous investment is made by the government. This is made by the government. And basically the government would be spending uh, for 
investment in the form of infrastructural activity for example by building some roads some building some bridges uh, some uh, going for the construction of some buildings for schools government hospitals etc the government will be incurring some expenditure to construct or to go for some infrastructural activities which would be considered as autonomous investment and this is not dependent on the income of the government even if the income of the government is zero the government will go for this and how can the go income how can uh, the government get income from uh, income to go for such an activity if it is not considering income as the main criteria to go for such investment actually what the government usually does is that the government uh, it will compare its revenue and expenditure and mostly the expenditure of the government would be more and how can the government finance its expenditure from a very short revenue or you could see that the revenue is uh, considered to be having a shortage there is a shortage of revenue here so how can the government go for more expenditure and this could be financed by something called borrowing so the government will borrow money from uh, somewhere and the uh, finances investment activities and that is why you saw uh, we could see that the government goes for autonomous investment and this is what uh, we could see during the 1930s during 1930s as a result of the great depression the private individuals were reluctant to make any investment because the investment climate in such a scenario was very bad so people were expecting a loss how can people go for investment if they expect a loss so here the marginal efficiency capital was very less so in such a scenario what the government had done is that the government had gone for autonomous investment and this is what even the keynes suggest even keynesian economists suggest suggested this only so what keynes suggested was that um, whenever uh, the private individuals are hesitant or if they are reluctant to make any if they hesitate to make investment or if they are reluctant to make any investment as a result of their pessimistic feeling regarding the marginal efficiency of capital then it is the role of the government to go for autonomous investment so autonomous investment will definitely create an increase in income as a result of multiplier effect this is what keynes told and we could see coming back to uh, this particular autonomous type of investment we can see that a nation's autonomous investment is something that depends on several several conditions for example it has to take into consideration the social condition the economic condition the political conditions and so on investment can change when there is a change in technology also if there is a, a discovery of a new resource also there, there can be a change that can happen to the investment so investment is influenced by so many so many factors we have to consider and out of which interest rate and income are considered to be the prominent factors affecting the investment of a nation so that's all about the investment function uh, i hope you could understand uh, the session on investment function i request you to like and subscribe to this channel for more videos you, you can also be a part of a telegram community for it's a free telegram community you can join it uh, here for free and uh, that can be done by clicking on to the link given in the description box uh, i'll be providing the link uh, of the very same in the description box also you can be a part of uh, our learn economy app you can download it uh, by again using the link given in the description box that's it uh, hope you could understand and request you to like share and subscribe to this channel for more videos thank you for watching